Okay, welcome. So uh, before we get started, so again, this is um, going to be the first of many videos that I'm going to be doing for different lectures. And today we're going to start talking about whole numbers and we're going to be talking about um, the basics. So with any section or with any video, we always start with vocabulary and the basics and we build from there. Okay, so today will be no different than any other day. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do these videos with some uh, short videos and uh, teach you guys some of the concepts, vocabulary, definitions, and then in the next videos we'll talk about putting all that together and eventually get to do examples and some practice problems that you yourself can uh, try your hand at. Okay, and so again, practice makes improvements. So throwing ideas and, and uh, concepts out at you without any practice is not very productive. Okay, and again, you're going to likely forget um, what it is that uh, I'm trying to teach you. Okay, so, so let's get started. So again, we're going to start with some basic ideas of numbers. We're going to figure out what these values are. And again, we're going to start with the very simple uh, numerals, right? So in our system of mathematics, which actually comes, goes back to uh, Rome, even before the Romans, when, uh, you know, the Greeks, and uh, in fact, there's a very interesting history of how we got zero in our um, numerals, because in the Roman culture, there is no symbol for zero, right? We have the I, we have II, and III, and IV, and things like that for the numbers one through four, and then five, and all the way through to 10, but there's no Roman numeral for zero. So that's an interesting topic to look up, um, how we got the numeral zero into our uh, numeral system, okay? So what is a numeral? A numeral is a symbol that represents numbers, okay? So in our system, we have, we have 10 numerals, 10 symbols, um, which we call digits in our numbering system, okay? So those begin with zero, and goes up to, oops, up to nine. Okay, so now, any one of these uh, numerals represents a number right, has an intended meaning. These are what we call the digits. These are the digits zero through nine. Now we can combine one or more of those digits, those numerals, uh, to create a number. Okay, and this is where the position of the numerals is important, right, because the position of our numerals together will give us the intended meaning. So if we gotta have the right ordering, right, for the numerals, right? So for example, if I put eight and nine together this way versus this way, those two orderings mean different things. And this is where the idea of place value comes in, right? So, and this is probably one of the most important topics in, in, uh, in the numeracy is this idea of teaching place value, okay? Place value is very important to later on doing addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. The four basic operations is key on a hey, place value, okay? Uh, just think about it. If you don't know place value, it becomes difficult on adding and subtracting numbers, okay? Which are basic operations, right? So, this is not the same as this. So combinations of the numerals together give us an intended value, okay? And so this idea comes into the idea of place value. And so we're going to talk about place value a little bit. So this column here and this column here represent different place values, okay? Now here's the thing. I stress, and I'm going to challenge you guys, that, that understanding place value is more important than counting. In fact, just to, just to give you a little bit about myself, when I was teaching my daughter when she was three or four and I was teaching her 
um, math, and I started teaching her, um, one of the things I discouraged her from doing was counting. What I did was I encouraged her to understand place value without even really, <clears throat> without even giving her the, the, the nomenclature, uh, the terminology, the vocabulary. What I did was I started taking groups of pennies, groups of MMs, groups of eraser heads, whatever the case may be, but I usually stuck with pennies. And what I would do is I would get her to see groups, to groups of five, right? So I would start with one, and I would get her to understand that was one penny. And then I would put two, and then I would put three. And, I, and, and what I do is I build on this idea that uh, of groups, being able to her, for her to visually see groups of one, two, three, four, and five, especially five. Because then what I could do is if I threw five pennies on the table in any kind of order, in any kind of arrangement, she would be able to look at it and know that there are five there without counting, because she would see the groups of five. And then what I could do is I could put a group of five here and a group of three here in two different piles, and then she could see that, oh, this is five and this is three, and I could then start introducing addition, because then she could do, well, five and three equals eight. And so by building in this idea of place value or groups, I could give her the scaffolding that she would need later to be able to do addition in her head. Because if you can see groups of five, then you can see groups of 10, which is what our base, our system is based on, is base 10. And so if you could do that, then you could start adding and subtracting numbers or even then multiplying and dividing. Now my daughter is 10 now, and she does large numbers of multiplication of two digit and three digit numbers, and she does it in her head. Why? Because I've helped her build up this idea that, hey, as long as I know the place value, I can start adding things up in my head and I can get the answer. For example, so if I say, hey, what's this? And I have multiplication here, right? Oh, well, let's, let's do addition, because since we'll get to multiplication later. But if I do addition, let's say, then I can look at this and again see that by, if I understand the place value, this is 80 plus 90, which is 170, and this is 9 plus 8, which is what? 17. So 170 plus 17 is 187. And I'm done. See how I did that? I didn't have to carry anything. I didn't have to worry about anything because what? I focused on the place value. What do these represent? This represents 80. This represents 90. So 80 plus 90 is 170. Easy. I can remember that. And then 8 plus 9 is 17. So 170 plus 17, 187. Boom. Done. See how powerful that is? So you could do mental math with a lot of numbers just by keeping track of place value, okay? Okay, so what we're gonna do next time is we'll talk about um, different groups of numbers. And then how do we look at putting these together and then talking about groups of numbers and uh, terminology for those groups of numbers. We're gonna talk about something called groupings or by place value or what I call magnitude. And we'll talk about that later. Till then, have a great day.